So this case is Martinez and Page versus Southern California Edison and Edison International. It's a retaliation case. Mr. Page was deathly afraid from day one of retaliation. And in fact, when he initially reported the harassment, he did so anonymously. And he even said he wasn't willing to be interviewed in the office. Mr. Martinez was different. Within 45 days of his report, about seven complaints came in accusing Mr. Martinez of a bunch of wrongdoing. We say the company used it as an excuse to fire him in retaliation, and that's what the jury found. And what the case really in the long run became primarily about was retaliation under California's Fair Employment and Housing Act. You know, Edison's position is, look, you raised this complaint, you were primarily focused on these three supervisors, we terminated the three supervisors. So Edison's point was the problem solved, we did the right thing. The folks who participated willingly in that were not fired and they were upset that the games essentially had stopped because of Mr. Page and Mr. Martinez's complaint. As I was starting to give the closing argument on punitives that day, I will confess that it just felt like the numbers we were talking about and we were thinking of asking were probably not big enough. What was important to me is the press about this verdict after the fact. It wasn't jury gone wild. It wasn't runaway jury. All we started reading about the case was employers and trade journals talking about what went wrong, what can we learn as employers to do differently. They had this facade of, we did the right thing, we fired the three bad folks. And that was their defense, and that was their perspective in real time. But it was painfully clear and obvious that that didn't solve the whole problem. So I hope that next time around, Edison or any other employer is gonna solve the whole problem, not just scapegoat certain people and try to sweep the rest under the rug, which is ultimately what the jury found happened here.